Hello my crafty friends. Today we're switching it up and instead of an organization video, we are going to be doing some more spring DIYs, trash to treasure. I am grabbing some stuff out of my fabulous thrift hoard and transforming it into some beautiful spring decor for this wonderful weather we're starting to get. So first off, I'm going to take two different candlesticks. Y'all, your candlesticks do not have to match, okay? As long as you like them, mix them up and they will look just fine. Pinky promise you. I'm going to take cake batter and French millinery for this video and we're going to play around with the colors. So for this first candle holder, I am going to do a base layer of cake batter and then I am going to let this completely dry. I'm going to take my second candle holder and we are going to put French millinery on it. You guys can already see how beautiful this color is. It's absolutely stunning. Okay. Anyways, so after that dries, what I'm going to do is layer our colors on top of each other and look at how pretty that cake batter looks while it's drying down. So I am going to apply two coats of the cake batter to this candle holder. Now, if you want to, you could apply big top before applying that second layer of paint. However, I didn't want to because I wanted to show you guys that it wasn't a necessary step you have to take, especially with using our clay-based paints. So I will say though, I did have to do two coats of yellow or cake batter on this one, which kind of caused a little hiccup later, but I will show you that when it comes. All right, so I'm going to grab now the cake batter one, and we're gonna get French millinery, and we're gonna put it over it. If you guys are like, you're crazy, I promise, trust the process. Uh, tell me down below in the comments if you love your nasty old chip brushes, because in this video I use a new one, and I realized, why I like these dingy ones because the bristles no longer fall out of them. <laughs> so I'm going to grab a baby wipe and I am going to start wet distressing this. Now, the more pressure you put down on to your candle holder or whatever item you're using, the more paint's going to come off. So I am using a pretty light pressure here because I just want that first layer of French millinery to come off to show the beautiful cake batter underneath. Now, if I wanted to, I could press a little bit harder and I could get down to the original candle holders color as well and show three colors through. So that is why I chose not to do the big top in between. Now, when I came to this candle holder, because I had used two layers of cake batter, it was a little harder for me to get down to the French millinery. The DIY paints are clay based. They're super pigmented. So y'all, it was hard to say the least. So it kind of ended up making the French millinery kind of like look gray, kind of muddled, I guess, because I kept on having to wipe, wipe, <laughs> wipe. Anyways, you guys, I am going to drill a hole in the top of both of these candle holders. That way it makes it easy for me to put my screw in. Now, let me show you my mistake here. It's not the glue, okay? We're gonna put the glue on. I put Gorilla Glue and then hot glue. And then I'm going to take, you guys, what are these called? These little basket plates. They're like mini, mini versions of like the bigger ones, you know? So I put these on and then I get the screw and I'm trying to put the screw through and I just make the biggest mess with my hot glue. Luckily I was able to just peel it off. So what you should do is put your screw through first, then apply your glue, then get that screw in that hole that we made and then screw your tops on. Yes, that is right. We are going to do that with both of them. And then I am just going to grab my clear DIY wax and apply that to my candles. I really wanted to keep that matte lighter finish of the cake batter and the French millinery. So that's why I chose to use the clear wax instead. 
Now we are just going to accessorize them however you'd like and look at that layering. I am totally digging the cake batter with the French millinery. And you guys, I only have one French millinery left, but I get my paint order on Thursday. So just be patient and wait for your girl. And you can see right here that French millinery didn't really come through. It almost looks gray, but you could still see the details. I love how they came out. It was something a little different. Upcycle by Brie kind of did something like these. Actually, she did, and that's where I got the idea. <laughs> okay, I found this at Turnstiles for I think like $1.99, and it's actually plastic, made in USA, uh, but it wasn't worth any kind of money. So I decided we are going to flip this cutie. Um, I also found one that's like a, a coffee pot or something. I'm not sure. Comment down below what you guys watch while you're crafting. I watch murder mystery. I watch craft uh, like stuff on YouTube in the mornings when I'm getting the kids ready. But for the most part, I watch murder mystery or I will watch Titanic on repeat or <laughs> Hocus Pocus. So tell me down in comments. All right, so we are going to do two coats of French millinery on this entire piece. I don't do the back because it's hollow and it doesn't show. Then again, we are going to get into a baby wipe and I'm going to wet distress the florals. I really didn't know what I wanted to do here. I wanted to bring some of that like darkness back. I almost thought about dark wax, but then I don't know, thinking about dark wax and like spring decor, eh, it just doesn't, that darkness just doesn't go for me. So I distressed all of the florals. And then I'm gonna go in with clear wax. I went in with clear wax because y'all didn't know what the heck I was gonna do. My ideas are all over the place for this, which you will see. <laughs> then taking white wax, you guys know I usually like stipple it on, put it everywhere. Well, I didn't want it all over the teapot. I just wanted it on the florals. So my idea was like, I'm gonna take some, dip my finger in it like I do the gold wax. And then I'm gonna take my microfiber cloth and I'm gonna wipe that excess off. But I mean, it literally wiped all of the white wax off. So uh, we end up going with my go-to, which is the gold gilded wax. And I put some on this part because I felt like that's where it would naturally be like brass. And then the little knob on the top of the teapot, which I thought would be brass as well. And I just put the lightest amount, just so you could kind of see that little glimmer when you are looking at it. And I put a little bit of a heavier amount on this. Now, you guys, if you find detailed items like this at the thrift store, pick them up because they are so much fun to work with, wax, distress, or even if I had the time, paint those flowers. That would have been gorgeous as well. But this definitely takes that dated look and brings it up a little bit. And, you know, we turned it into some beautiful spring decor or everyday decor for that matter. I love how it turned out. All right. Most of you guys probably see ugly planters at the thrift store all the time. Do not be scared of them, my friends, because we can completely transform them. I found quite a few at the thrift store as I usually do. And these were just not my vibe. We had like a, I don't know what kind of green that is. And this one was all like scraped up. I think that's like a herb, not a flower. All right, I'm gonna take this butterfly mold from IOD and do not get mad at me. I do not have this in stock. I actually didn't even know I had this mold. So um, when I order for those, that first, quarter release, I will make sure to add this to my inventory. So I dusted it with cornstarch and then I just wanted to show you all the different clays that I do work with. There's iron orchid designs, DOS air dry clay and the paper clay. Um, and I haven't used clay in forever. My DOS was so hard and I wasn't, I didn't have the time to like reconstitute it. So we moved to the IOD clay and 
I'm going to push that in and then I just push the excess out over the rim. Now, if you guys have been watching me for any amount of time, you guys know I used to despise using clay. And I really think that's because it was very time consuming for me because I didn't know how to use it. Um, now, after many, many practices, I have developed, you know, like my, my method of doing it. And I can definitely see the value in using the clay molds. So practice makes perfect, my friends. Like just keep on trying and working with it and it'll get easier and easier. Now I'm just going to flip my mold over and peel it back and those molds will pop right out. I take the little body off the bottom. I didn't like it. And now we are gonna take the tight bond wood glue, and this is the quick and thick, and I'm gonna brush it on. Y'all know I'm a messy crafter, but man, that wood glue, I cannot do it on my fingers. It gives me the heebie-jeebies. So after I apply it, keep in mind these molds are still wet. I'm gonna push that into my pot. Now you don't wanna push so hard that you start losing the details of your mold, but you want to make sure that it's adhered to the surface. So for this bigger pot, I'm going to do three butterflies just right in the front of it. And then with the second pot, I think these are herbs. What do you guys think? Herbs, herbs, um, uh, like thyme, you think? Anyways, we're going to put three of these on and then I am going to tape them down because since I'm rotating my pot, I don't want those molds to shift while they are setting up. So after they set up and with the quick, um, the quick and thick type on, it literally takes like a few minutes and then you can start playing around with it. Now my molds, again, they are still wet. And when you paint over them wet, it's going to be less likely that your molds are going to crack. So for that one, I did one coat of cake batter. And for this one, I'm going to do two coats of the French millinery. Now I like to use a, um, a chippy brush when I am doing this because those bristles get into all those details without me having to push my paintbrush into the molds. Um, you know, causing a chance of losing those details. So I decided I was going to clear my paint with Big Top. Don't know why I chose Big Top, but I think it's because of this. I decided to put white wax over the entire surface of the pot. So I'm just brushing it on and then stippling it on the mold, getting a microfiber cloth, wiping that excess back, as well as wiping the excess like that I had put all over the pot. That way all of that wax just settles in all of the beautiful details. And then it also lightens up your paint color. So you guys, I could not get these two to sit side by side because the other one was, its little leaves were everywhere. So we're gonna show you one by one. But you can see how beautiful these butterfly molds are. They're so whimsical very spring and it's definitely a mold that you can use on so many different projects but what a cute way to take some dated old pots and make them something new again make them your style and if you're somebody that you know owns a booth or anything these are just great little adds to your booth especially you know having greenery in there Okay, this last one, you guys, sometimes we don't have to do paint. Sometimes we don't have to get all technical with it. I'm going to grab this basket that I found at an estate sale for 50 cents, and we're going to accessorize it. So I'm going to grab some brown shipping paper, and I did that because I didn't want you seeing it through the weave of the basket. Um, I put paper on the bottom. That way I don't have to fill my basket with the Spanish moss. I have a base layer and then I could just kind of set this on top. I'm gonna also grab my reindeer moss just so we can bring some elements of like nature, 
greenery freshness to the basket as well. Um, I'm going to put this in sporadically, just have fun with it. If you have baskets, bring them out for spring, people. Now, these resin birds, my girl Erin from Lady Poe Designs, she made them for me. I will leave the link to her channel down below if you want to contact her for those. Um, I'm going to grab some of these really pretty like sprigs. These are from Dollar Tree and I have some pink ones, some white ones. Again, just trying to bring that nature element to my basket. I didn't want to go like hardcore and put big flowers in there. And then I'm going to grab our, our bird. And these are super easy to paint, by the way. I did two coats of cake batter, one coat of big top. Once that was dry, I'm going to grab the Barnwood Gray Liquid Patina. The Barnwood Gray and the Dark and Decrepit, you could use these as wood stains, decoupage mediums, and glaze. So in this case, I'm using it as a glaze. I'm applying it on, and while it's still wet, I'm gonna dab that excess off, and just like wax does, it's gonna settle into all of the details and just make them pop a little bit more. And how cute did this turn out? You guys, thank you for spending your time with me. I hope you enjoyed this extra DIY video this week. And make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And all products are available on my website. That link is down in the description box. I appreciate you all spending your time with me. Bye. Get him, Hank. <laughs>